Hogwarts Castle, a 5 inch gauge locomotive. Part 30, a riveting experience drilling the holes. This is a bag of 1 16th of an inch diameter copper rivets. And in order to use these I need to drill quite a lot of holes in the running boards. The current running boards are held to the valences just using some countersunk bolts. And the valences are made from brass angle which is shaped to fit the contours at the front and rear of the engine. For the time being I'm going to put these on one side because I don't need them yet. In this episode I'm going to mark out and drill holes along the edges of the running boards. I'm going to use some marking out blue for this. This is a pot of marking out blue that was sent to me by a man called Norman. Norman also sent me some red marking out fluid but I've explained a couple of times why I don't use that because during the using of the marking out fluid I would get it on my fingers and I got fed up with people saying oh dear have you cut yourself and that's why I use the blue stuff because if I get that on my fingers people never say oh are you from a distant planet and part of an alien invasion and is that the colour of your blood so why do we use marking out fluid well it makes marks show up because if you just scratch away on the metal any marks that you make are very difficult to see this marking out fluid is really good, it dries extremely quickly, so you're not really sat about waiting for it to dry. I used to use aerosol paint, and that was okay, but of course the drying time made the job slower. Once the first coat had dried a little, I went over it with the second coat, because I need to make the marks very visible. The next part of the operation is to use a two foot ruler and clamp this to the work. I'm using spring clamps for this, and once it's clamped all the way down, I'll be able to scribe a line all the way along the running board edge. This line needs to be a quarter of an inch in from the outside edge. Why a quarter of an inch? Well, it just so happens that that is the center of the existing holes that are used to bolt the running boards to the brackets that are fitted to the main chassis frames. I had to give a bit of thought to working out the distance between the rivets along the edge of the running board. This is not a scale model, so I'm definitely not going to get into rivet counting from the full size. By trial and error, I settled on a distance of one and a half centimetres. Why one and a half centimetres, I hear you ask? It seemed to be a good distance between the rivets, and it also avoided all of the original holes. This is an old cross vise fitted to my drilling machine, a very useful tool, and I'm making a simple jig to keep the running board in line and help me find the right position for the holes. I'm just making it from a couple of pieces of scrap wood, you can make it from whatever you want a piece of steel by, you could make a really good jig if you wanted to, but this does the job. In this clip I'm using my micrometer to verify that these rivets are actually 1 16th in diameter. If you want to make a really good job of this, you need to use a centre drill first, and accurately position it exactly on the mark on the line. Had I have wanted to use a centre drill, I would have used a thinner piece of wood for the jig. So I'm drilling these holes without the aid of a safety net. If I get it wrong, the hole is going to be in the wrong place. I must admit, I found this job very difficult because I had to allow the camera in, and I'm not at a good angle to see these accurately, so you may find that some of these holes are slightly out of alignment. In this clip I've removed the jig and turned the running board over because on the other side, it needs deburring, and for this I'm using a 3 seconds of an inch drill just to remove the burrs. A word of caution though, when doing this job you must have the depth stop on the drilling machine engaged. If you don't, and the drill grabs, the 3 second drill will go all the way through the hole, and this will be disastrous. I work my way steadily down the other side of the running board and deburred every one of the holes. Not quite at this speed though, I speeded the video up so the job wouldn't take as long. At the rear side of this particular running board there are some details that stop me from using a drill. So I'm using a needle file to remove the burrs. I suppose I could have used a long twist drill in my fingers. But I'm just showing an alternative to deburr without using a drill. In this fascinating subject of model engineering or full size engineering and even woodwork, there are right and wrong ways to do the job. As I've said countless times to the experts who write in, these videos are made with the beginner firmly in mind, and there are different ways of doing jobs, each to his own. 
with these so-called keyboard warrior experts who are always telling me I'm doing it wrong or I should do it like this or are you aware that? Yes, I'm generally very aware. I read a few of the comments, some I let through to the channel, others I just delete and after a while I get sick of them and I delete the user so they can't comment anymore. And to block the user from commenting on my channel I need to go to the user's channel and guess what? Most of these user's channels say this channel has no content. My reply to most of them is, why don't you make a video about it? It doesn't bother me in the slightest and it's all part of the job. Right, this is D-Bird. Here's a good tip, I'm using a Proxon motor tool. It's running quite slowly and it has a D-Birding tool fitted. And I'm using this to adjust the position of the holes ever so slightly to bring them into the correct position. After a while, every one of the holes was more or less in line with the one next to it. In this clip I'm test fitting some of the rivets and they're very tight in the holes. But I'm not going to do anything about this just at the moment. The next part of the job is to fit the running board to the valence using the bolts. And then I will use these holes that I've just drilled as a jig to drill through the brass valence before I put the rivets in place. It will all make more sense in a forthcoming episode. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.